Hi guys, I'm back to United States. I was in Serbia for almost three weeks and the weather was kind of like here, really, really rainy and kind of cold, unusual for that time of the year in Serbia. So I didn't do as much as I wanted to do and one thing that made uh, my vacation a little sad, well, more than a little sad, I actually was avoiding making videos because it was too hard talking about it and not starting to cry is our dog passed away about six days after we went to vacation and just to say a few things about it um, we knew it's coming he was uh, 14 years old and for Dobermans you know average lifespan is 10 they can live longer but this last Christmas we were sure he's not gonna be around next Christmas and uh, um, we would get tearful thinking about it so uh, we were planning for uh, my husband to come back early his vacation was only six days plus traveling so the dog is not boarded for a long time because we were just making him very comfortable at home he had arthritis he was on medicines and he we were just you know we just wanted to make him happy and comfortable as long as he's alive and because he was so loving to us uh, and um, but it, it didn't work day before my husband came back he already passed away and then what was really hard is not being able to grieve it together because uh, of the time zone we couldn't talk for a period of time just through text so when I married my husband I was a cat person I always considered myself a cat person and um, I had a cat already and uh, my husband had three dogs and two of them really drove me nuts. Uh, they were the little dachshunds that barked so much. They're like some of the most barking dogs that you can have. And uh, and then Deacon, the Doberman, um, I didn't think I'm going to like him so much. But um, he was one thing, one word that a lot of owners use that I have started using is word in tune. He, they're just so intelligent and emotionally intelligent to read when you are unhappy with something and modify their behavior to make you happy. So, a long story short, I consider myself a dog person now. So, I really think that some things that you experience with uh, dogs you cannot experience with cats and it's very special so uh, he's gonna be missed a lot maybe I'll post a few photos of him we have so many of them and so many memories you know and that's what made card when I came back home because the first thing you uh, happens when you open the door of your home is he comes to you So Emily from the Succulent Greenhouse, the other YouTube channel, she knew I, I lost the dog uh, because she saw it on my Instagram. Um, I posted the day when we found out and she reached out and we talked. She has a dog that she loves very much, Maxie, that is also older dog. So she knew how, how hard can it be when you lose a dog. And then one day, you know, I came back to United States and I see a package in front of my door and I'm like... Hmm. Is it my husband's package and I come there and it's for me and it was from Emily uh, so sweet of her so I started unboxing with you and then I just started crying so I didn't do it but it was really sweet of her and I wanted to you know like this through my video say thank you she sent me this look at guys how pretty it is a little stone um, gravestone for Deacon or memory stone um, has a, a paw with his name Deacon and has a succulent underneath I think somebody in her family that obviously is artistic has done a, such a good job painting both my husband and I love this one so much I know she said you can put it outside 
uh, by his grave but we decided we really want to save it and maybe put it somewhere in the house because it's so pretty and then she sent me uh, a few other little things in that package which was just so sweet there was a um, um, pencil um, with a little eraser you see guys and then there is some uh, stickers that you can also order from her and then like a desktop desktop garden flag and some um, you know cards and stay sharp and um, yeah that was really really sweet of her and it was totally unexpected so thank you Emily now back to succulents something that really kind of made me sad is that when I came back there was a few plants that died those were more smaller plants and then there was number of plants that was very dehydrated so I have water therapy with some of them some perked back easily with water uh, so that was kind of disappointing that they were in a bad, not very good condition probably the worst affected were stapelias they were so dried up one of the I'm especially sad for Caroluma speciosa that I got from one of my subscribers from Ohio Wade from Ohio it died and almost all of the stapelias except the big established ones had so many mealy bugs the tips of the of the stapelias were like covered white so and I, I used the q-tip and I removed every every single one that I could find and I tweeted them twice and they are looking good except that I lost about two so it's not, it, it looked really terrible now I feel better about it and then the third thing that really disappointed me is uh, how big our woods are I'm gonna go outside now and I'm gonna show you I don't think I have had this or small number of hours with light ever before because our trees got so high and so wide and um, we have uh, been tired of woods for a while the, the air is beautiful here it's so quiet but it's not great when you want to grow succulents when you have want to have more light in the house so we were thinking about moving and we have decided this year to move so where we are planning to move uh, it's a much more open space um, but it's not going to happen probably till the end of the year hopefully end of the year so till then I have to still keep my succulents alive and uh, this year I made a decision and I'm going to show you uh, you can see behind me there is still some plants uh, I decided to keep Echeverias, Graptopetalums and Crassulas, most of the Crassulas, inside under lights. They always get messed up outside and it's so wet and we don't have enough sunlight. Uh, Echeverias and Graptopetalums stretch and I don't think I want to risk that this year. Uh so guys, I'm here in front of my greenhouse but I just wanted to show you how much these woods have grown and they're like the tr the branches are now right above here a shed that we have on the deck they're just everywhere so sun only comes from this area here so the window or the number of hours that the greenhouse gets light is much less than the last year i'm gonna go up front where the they where it's even worse so I'm uh, here at the front porch that's facing south and uh, it's receiving much less light than the last few years. Again, the woods that we have got so tall, the, the trees, that it's um, much less sunlight than in the previous three years. I'm sorry about the background noise. And you can see I will do the tour uh, in some other video. My cactuses and euphorbias are here. But I don't think I'm going to be using side porch as much as the last years because it's getting very little sunlight. So yeah, that's kind of discouraging. Um, but that's how it goes when you are living in the woods. I mean, it's not really great for succulents. So I'm glad we're going to be moving somewhere there where there is more open space. I'm glad to be back to making videos now when the room is cleaned up and hopefully a little more order outside and inside. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon in the next video. Mm -hmm.